Hi there, I'm Crazy John Carrots, and we are here on OSH Radio again, and tonight is Nancy Thames. And uh, she, I know down on your website you say you're a motivational speaker, but you do a lot of other interesting things working with, uh, I believe I read it, you know, communicating with higher beings and higher dimensions and the concept of extra, extraterrestrials and stuff. And maybe you can tell us about your life, uh, how you would describe yourself and also how you got into this. Okay. Um, well, my name is Nancy Thames, like you said. And I am a lifelong contactee with interdimensional beings and extraterrestrials. And my first conscious memories go back to about two and two or three years old. And this has been reoccurring all my life. I'm 64 years old. So this has been a lifelong ordeal for me. Um, there are parts of it where it wasn't so uh, pleasant when I, uh, well, let's just start from the beginning, I guess would be easier. When I was young, very young, um, it was fun. You know, the world around me had not influenced me, so it was fun. I looked forward to it, and they made it enjoyable. So, you know, when I would mention to my parents that there were, like, beings in my room, or they would just say, what a, you're having a silly dream, go back to bed, or certain things like that. So, and they just brushed it off because they just thought it was a child's imagination. But as I got to junior high and high school, you know, at that point, it wasn't funny or cute to my parents. And they would say, you don't need to talk about things like that, you know, things like that. And you cannot talk about this at school. You cannot talk about this Girl Scouts. You know, you don't tell your uh, teammates on your basketball team, all those different things. You, you cannot do this. And you cannot talk about this to other family members because they put people in straight jackets and put them mm -hmm. in a mental institution or, you know, a lot of places consider it demonic. Uh, I grew up in Tennessee, which is basically like the Bible Belt <laughs> starting of it. So these things were not topics that you could talk about at all. And everybody's perception of it was as not, it was negative. So I learned very, very quickly to not talk about this. So I suppressed it and I was fine with it. Um, you know, there was things I didn't understand about it because as I was getting older, taking my science and biology classes and taking these different things and you know the mechanics of how they were t getting me um I would I have the ability I know when they're coming it's a, a frequency I feel it and I know that they're coming so when I was young it did not bother me but as I got older and I knew they were coming and I had started to acquire fear anxiety and I would like pull the covers up and stuff and I would keep my eyes shut. And to be honest with you, they probably told me telepathically to keep my eyes closed because everything I feel, they feel tenfold. So the experiences changed when I became fearful and had anxiety. Um, because of them being telepathic and being able to feel this, they do not understand these emotions. They, in their reality, they do not have these type of feelings. So they would just simply tap me out kind of into a trance-like state where I was fully functional and I was conscious, but I was in a, uh, we'll call it a sedated without the medication type uh, feeling. But the only problem with that is that when they bring me back and sometimes I would start to wake up before actually getting back in the bed from that state, or I would wake up later and realize that my memories were fragmented. There was like missing gaps or some people call it missing time. There was pieces that didn't flow together. And I found this to be very frustrating. So I figured out and and they would would tell me that I had to work on my fear. I had to work on, you know, 
I had to uh, come to grips with and understand why this was happening to me and all these different things. And it took me a very long time to get to that point. And what really got me to that point was um, when I, in my twenties, you know, I eventually got married and I eventually had children and I was on a vacation with uh, my two sons and an ex-husband and we were, I was in, my husband and I were in one bed and the children were in another bed and I felt the frequency. So I raised up and looked around and three grays materialized in the room. And these grays were not the same ones that come for me. These were different ones. They were three foot tall and they had on like uh, robes with high collars. And when they saw me, one approached me and pressed me down and telepathically told me, this is not about you. <laughs> and so I was laid back down and then I realized they were walking over towards my children. And at that point I was starting to freak out more or less, but they put me in a sleep paralysis. So I was fully conscious and aware of what was going on, but I could not move and I could not speak. So I had to watch them go over and collect my two sons and then lead them out. And at that point, it's like I just blacked out or went to sleep. And then I didn't wake up till the next morning and I was very upset. And the first thing I did was look over and they were safe and sound in their bed. So we all went to breakfast and um, I had mentioned to my husband at the time, what had happened. And he said, you don't need to tell children something like that. You know, and he, I don't know if he just didn't believe me or if he didn't want to believe me or if he actually did, but we both talked it over and agreed that we were just going to ask them if they had any strange dreams or anything of that nature. And so I did. And they of course said no. So they didn't remember anything about it or either they didn't want to talk about it, but I'm going to, I'm going to assume that they were in that type of, uh, type of uh, sleep paralysis that I had experienced to where you're not fully conscious, you know, it's fragmented. So anyway, um, when I got back home, I meditated and asked for them to come and explain to me why this was happening to me, why it was happening to my children, what was the purpose? What does it all mean? And um, I do not claim that I can call them down or summon them. I, I'm a human being. I, I can't do any of those crazy things, you know. So they did come, but not they came on their time, not immediately when I asked, but I did ask. So when they did, it was the grays that I was familiar with. And the same ones come from me ever since I was a little girl. Or the, the very same three come for me and the fem she's a female gray and she took me by the hand and took me to see a group of elders on a craft and I asked the elders and these elders were not grays they were a group of interdimensional beings and they were called a group of elders and they were like in a U shape and I was in front of them and she got me there so and they explained to me that I had made an agreement before being born as a human to be a part of this uh, evolutionary experience for humanity, that I was going to be a part of the program, that I agreed to come here and have my human experience. And throughout my life, I would start to remember what my purpose here was. And they pretty much just left it at that because I was around 30 years old. And at 30 years old, I think they were taken in consideration that my brain could only handle so much information without being overwhelmed or, or setting me into a, sending me to a mental health facility or whatever, because they understand, you know, that it's hard and they know that it's hard to be accepted down here. So I accepted what they said and well, actually I kind of just looked confused and then they opened up a vision and I, in the vision, I saw myself uh, waiting uh, to have my human experience. And then they said it was time. And then they kind of just walked me through the process and I visualized myself 
being born. And I visualized myself like an essence of me going in into my mother and into a fetus. And then they told me that throughout my life, they would be visiting me to help me remember my purpose here on earth. And that's basically what has happened to me all my life. All these things were happening. And, you know, I really didn't have anyone to communicate with. And it was very, very hard. And, I, you know, I, I've been through two failed marriages, um, you know, had a lot of serious, horrible things happen in my life, uh, fighting uh, you know, ex-husbands, fighting over children, all these traumatic things. And every time this traumatic things in my life would happen, they would come to me and tell me that if it ever got to be too much here, that I could always come home. And I would always say, no, I don't know. Because at the time that these things were happening to me, all I knew was this is it. This is my life. I had no understanding of, even though they told me that I chose to be here, in my mind, I had no understanding. I just thought that we were born here, we die here, and we're dead and gone. That's it. <laughs> That's all I knew. So, you know, it, it's it's just been a unbelievable experience of throughout this life, figuring out, I, you know, I never felt comfortable in churches. I felt like that I was not getting the full truth about life. And I felt like, I always felt like I uh, looked up at the stars and the moon and all these things. I, I really felt like, you know, I think I belong somewhere else, you know, but, you know, I think a lot of people feel like that. So it really didn't register. None of this stuff registered with me, but I always knew that as I got older and I started looking around, getting books. And then of course, when we got the internet and stuff, there was all kinds of information. And I realized that my experiences were very, very different than a lot of other people's. And that was very confusing to me too, because I didn't understand why, you know, why everybody did, was not having the same experiences. It just made no sense to me. So finally, um, about two years ago, they gave me, gifted me, I guess, a Kundalini experience. And it absolutely scared me to death. I had no clue what it was. I had no clue what was happening to me. I was asleep in my bed by myself. And all of a sudden, it was like my body jerks up to a sitting position in the bed. And my head kind of goes back like that. And it's like these surges come in all through my head, all the way down to the lower part of my body, and then goes back up. And then my head, my body would go back down, and it would do it again. And this happened like three consecutive times. And then after it was over, then it was just like a unbelievable, different uh, experience of like a, being in a tunnel like thing and, and I ended up like it was I was in my closet and then the closet turned into a craft and then a craft I walk in and there's like all these humans sitting around in a conference and I sit down and it's like everybody's waiting for me to say something and all I can think about is how in the world do I get home <laughs> so it was it was really bizarre because I was still in shock from whatever it was happening to me, pulling me up and doing these surges. And, you know, at that point, I really didn't know if I was alive or dead, to be honest with you. I had no clue. <laughs> so next thing I know, though, I'm waking up the next day and I'm like, oh, my goodness, what in the world? And I, to be honest with you, I didn't even tell anybody about it for a while because I just couldn't get it pieced all together in my mind. But I did realize that I was starting to get all these, this information and I would, it was like I just automatically knew things. And, you know, before I was getting downloads and stuff, but I was always questioning them. So finally, I had a face-to-face -face contact again with the interdimensionals and extraterrestrials. And they explained to me that they had done this because 
I was having a hard time ex ex accepting who I am and that I needed a little jump start. So they opened up my subconscious into my human conscious to help me remember who I am and my purpose here and to help me recall all these events in my life and piece them all together. And what's remarkable about all this is that my son is 42 years old and they gave him a Kundalini awakening and he's having the same kinds of experiences that I am. And we're talking, this is the little boy that I saw being taken for the first time, you know, and. Now you said they had taken both, both your sons. Did sons. Your other, has your other son had anything else since or? Yes, but he has not had a Kundalini awakening and he's not as, um, he doesn't have the same, he's five years younger than his brother, but he has not had the experiences like his brother, but, and I don't know why that is, but I, he is very aware of our, all of our situations. And even as children, they have now expressed to me now that they're older and told me about lots of times that they've had visitations that I wasn't even a part of or never even witnessed. So, but anyway, so now I understand and through my, um, I have face-to-face -face contact with these beings. I, I When I say face-to-face, -face, I'm talking face-to-face, -face, holding hands, touching, feeling skin, and, you know, all the, seeing what the temperature of the skin is like, all these things. And another uh, thing that happened was they, um, my son and I, they, instigated us to go to Mexico. They wanted us to go to Mexico and meet an indigenous tribe and go up on this mountain that was very, very primitive and very eco-friendly. So my son <clears throat> orchestrated this trip. And at first he thought he was just going to go on his own. And so then when he started telling me about going on this trip on, on his own, and I'm like, wait a minute, where are you going? He said to Mexico, and I was like, "I'm," and he goes, "You're supposed to go with me," and I'm like, "Am I?" He goes, "Yeah." So we, he and I, go on this trip, and when now this we, is your your oldest son. oldest son, yes. And from the minute we got to the airport, when we got to the airport, our flight was delayed, and it was so strange. And telepathically, I was told that we were not meant to be on this flight. So we ended up, the airlines gave us a, a hotel room stay, and we stayed at a hotel close to the airport. It was in Memphis, Tennessee, of all places. And that night, that's when it all started happening, was from that very first night. And that first night, I woke up, raised up three Grays were in the room, and these were not the little short ones. These were different ones, but and they looked at me because my son was still in the bed covered up, and they looked at me and they said, "This is not about you." And I just turned right around and laid down, and then they went over and and got my son. And you know, forty two years old, I just went back to sleep because I understood I, I understood it, and I was not scared, and I was not upset. And for whatever reason, I accepted that I was not going to be a part of his experience and, and, you know, that kind of thing. However, when we finally did get to Mexico and they came to see one of us each every night, but not at the same times, they would not take us both at the same time. And we figured out that I have three that I, and the female I am bonded with, um, we have a great love for each other and attachment. And he has his own three that are separate from mine. And they will not take us at the same time because when they come to get each of us, they're teaching us things. And it, it's, um, well, it's a, a physical exam to check our spiritual growth, our evolutionary stage, in our mental health 
they've checked that. And they also check our physical well-being. And they will tweak if something needs to be done. They will fix us. But they will not take us at the same time because, and <clears throat> they proved to me why. <laughs> they came one night and my I, I rose up and was and grabbed a hold of the female Grace hand. And we were standing there and I looked across the room. We were in a cabin and my son was like, and I uh, sleep, well, I don't know how to explain it. He, he was trying to get up, but he couldn't get up. But he kept scrambling, you know, like his extremities were moving, but he, he couldn't get up. They had him in a sleep paralysis. He couldn't, he couldn't get past, he could never raise up. And, and so when I saw him doing that, I got alarmed and screamed screamed his name across the room <laughs> and automatically the female gray taps me out because I was showing severe anxiety and and severe uh, well anxiety I was upset because at that point we were there on our little vacation on our trip and I thought that we would get to experience maybe one time together not the case <laughs> So um, they blacked me out and then I had my experience and wherever they took me, it must not have been close by because when they brought me back, I became conscious as she was leading me to the bed. And, but I, my body was like, it had, it was like I had been in a roller coaster, like a, something like spinning because my body just felt really really strange and so she was helping me get in the bed and cover me up and it was just like uh, my stomach was just like whirling still it was very very strange and of course my son he wasn't he far as I know he 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 didn't go with us because and they confirmed to me that they will never let us go at the same time because we would not focus. We would be too worried about the uh, each other and we would not focus because the whole purpose of us going there is for me, the following night they came and for me, they took me outside and when I walked outside with them, they the interdimensionals took their hands and said, everything is a lie. And then I looked all through the woods and I could see trees talking to each other, plants talking to each other, all these things communicating to each other. And there was a tree there and it was laughing at me, I thought. Mm -hmm. And I asked the interdimensional, why is that tree laughing at me? And he said, the tree's laughing at humanity. And I was like, well, why is he laughing? He said, because humans run around chopping them down. You, um, eat fruit from their trees or nuts, you know, you use the wood to keep yourself warm or to make your homes or to make whatever. And he said, we produce the air that you breathe. You, you are alive because of the air we produce. And he said, and you run around chopping us down and have no appreciation of us. That's why we're laughing at you it's because of your stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see that. that that's a good point yeah I can see yeah. that and so I'm just like whoa but anyway so they wanted us to understand our connections with our planet earth and they wanted us to understand our connection with all living conscious beings and that everything on our planet is alive including our air our water our forest our trees our insects our birds animals everything, our coral reefs, our jungles, everything is alive. And they wanted us to understand, confine like humanity to understand our connections with all. So, so you said before that you had a purpose. So is that your purpose to get yes. that message out to your fellow yes. man? Yes. My purpose is to help humanity understand we are not alone in the universe and that we are the reason why they are here is because 
in great numbers. And I'm talking like er, lots of different, many, many races, some races we don't even know about. All extraterrestrials, all interdimensionals are here because we are reaching higher consciousness. We are at an evolutionary step in our evolution. This is the greatest thing that's happened since our creation. And that's why they are here. They're here watching and witnessing it. And Well, I'm, I'm not sure about that. If they'd be watching our elections right now. I'm not sure they would agree with that point, but they're not watching our elections. <laughs> we can hope so. <laughs> yeah. But they're trying, they're putting in frequencies of love and positive things, trying to help us because the way that we reach higher consciousness is by learning to be better human beings. And these things will not happen overnight. Just like in our creation, it has to be done in a very slow, slow, precise fashion so that people are not shell shocked. So as we slowly reach a higher dimension, and dimensions are not physical places, it's higher levels of consciousness. And they showed me visions, and my son, of course, of visions of like how their evolution and how it will happen with us is that as we evolve up to higher consciousness, our materialistic ways will tinker off our negativity, warlike ways will tinker off. Like I said, it won't happen overnight. But through these higher consciousness, we will learn that our old ways of living and thinking no longer serve humanity. And that we will learn to think and live different ways. Because we'll finally understand that for the last decades, that our generation and many, 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 many behind us were manipulated. And our air, our water, our food all has toxins. Our social media is, is controlled, censored. And everything as far as to all this technology that they've been sitting on all this time, it should have been shared with humanity, but it was not because there are powers above any governments that are controlling and manipulating our world and our humanity. And these are human beings. These are elites, really rich elites that are part of the dark forces. And they decide who they want in government. Well, have, have they tried to reach out to those people that are doing the dark forces and change their mind? They don't want us to change because they lose all power. See, is they their intention and their goal is to keep humanity at a lower consciousness. They do not want us to send into higher levels because in higher levels, there is no wars. There is no negativity. Well, and there's profit and in wars and stuff. You know, there is profit in war. Well, I can see that. Yes. So how do they how do they hope that you can influence your fellow man and and how do they hope that you can get this message across to try and change it? I mean, do they give you any ideas of what they think you should be doing or how you should be going about it? Yes, doing what I'm doing and they show me they re, they reward me in non-material ways to let me know that they're proud and and to inspire me to do more but there's other people like me from all races that have incarnated here and we are at a higher frequency than the normal human and we once we, with all of us here we're going to help boost up our frequency to try to accelerate us to you have to understand they are a billion years ahead of us in evolution They've, they've known that this was going to happen a long time ago. They've been planning this. That's why I'm here. I know now through my Kundalini and through my uh, contacts with them, I was an interdimensional being and so were my children before I came here. We decided to come here and they feel like their purpose here is to assist me. But I think, sure, that's important for now, 
but they're also their purpose is to continue on after me to help. help. I don't know how long this is going to take. In interdimensional extraterrestrial realms, there is no such thing as time. Everything is happening here and now, the present and now, and everything is all at once. Well, so, technically, as an interdimensional being in a human body, I don't think there should be an end to you. I think maybe once this life is done you exactly can be well, born again me. and can and continue your yes your mission shall we say well to be honest with you i come from a mothership who most of the beings live on motherships and i'm with the interdimensionals are travel throughout many different galaxies and many different universes looking for beings on the avert on the verge of ascension and when th that's why they're here and we are top priority because we're a little bit slower than a lot of other beings out in the galaxy so we're kind of top priority and so when i die i know where i'm going my soul and my consciousness not my body will go back to source, which my source is with them. And sometimes, this is just my son and I, the beautiful part about he and I having these experiences. And when I was younger, I had nobody to talk to, but he and I can have these really in deep conversations. And, you know, there's so much about this that we'll never totally understand. It is far beyond our understandings of it's way beyond any of our physics, any of our concepts of life. It is way beyond that. So sometimes he and I speculate, you know what? We're alive up there in a sleep stasis. And this is the dream down here. The matrix. You're in the matrix. I don't know. You know, you know which one is the matrix? You know, but there's there's different ways of looking at this, but it's it's amazing because he and I both our sleep experience is like having a second life. We are constantly being taught things and experiencing things. So it's 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 really strange and it's really hard to balance these things out, but you have to balance it out because I'm a grandma, I'm a mother. So, and I have a job, you know, I have car payment, you know, all these things. So we, you have to be able to. Well, they should them. help pay you some money is what they should do. If you're doing well, a, don't a do job that. for them, they should give you some, they help you a little that. bit with that. But, that would be nice. But they do open up lots of opportunities for me. And, you know, and I meet lots of interesting people. It's really strange. It's like, I had no clue I was going to do that podcast earlier turns out it's going to be very important it's it's really strange it's um you know um i sincerely think all of us people that get involved in this we we are all connected in one way or another there's something there's some there's a connection there and i think once people realize this but every human being on this planet chose to be here and chose to be here at this time this is a big event, chose to be here because we just have to wake up and remember who we truly are. So I'm not the Nancy Timms that the world around me has created anymore. I know myself from inside. I know my sole purpose. I know why I chose to come and be here. And it's to help humanity. And it's to help people to learn that we can live better, longer lives. You know, we have a very short lifespan compared to any other beings in the universe. And it's not supposed to be this way. We're supposed to live longer lifespans, but these controlling elites, um, when, when we were created, for example, when we were created from what they told me, everything we ever needed to sustain us in our lives and keep us healthy and wise was placed here on this planet. And that's why we are connected to everything. So we should have no poverty. We should have no diseases because there's a cure for anything here. So all this technology and all these things have been done intentionally 
to keep us dumbed down, to keep us from getting more awareness and understanding that we are being controlled and led around like puppets. We've never been free, but we are going to wake up and understand that we can live longer lives. We can demand to not have our water contaminated with these toxins and chemicals. We can demand to not have our food have all these toxins and chemicals in it. And we will start living longer. And, you know, they have us dependent dependent upon a banking system and working nine to five. Mm. And they have us um, taking pharmaceutical drugs. Our bodies were not designed for synthetic medications. And everything we ever needed was put here on earth. And also a lot of our problems stem from depression or anxiety or negativity or negative environments creates all sickness and diseases. So once we learn these things and we raise our positive energy, we'll all become healthier, happier human beings and live longer lives. And they will not well, think, make money. You know, all, all that would be great. And I do agree with a lot of a lot of things you're saying about that, about man mm -hmm. and how, uh, you know, things we are controlled in some ways. And uh, me and some buddies had joked about, you know, the reason they call it TV programming is because it does some programming. Yeah, it messes uh, with you. Not just about buying things, but other messages are programmed into you. Now, I don't like letting my interviews go too long because I know people sorry, today yeah. can only take things in shorter chunks. And that is a pity. <laughs> it's interesting to me, too, as an example of that on YouTube, people love these new shorts and they're yeah. very short things and people love them. And the longer people, the attention span. But that's some of our problem today also with our media and stuff and how people want something instantaneously. Uh, you had a lot of interesting things to say. And. Uh, Questions for you is, where could people go to learn more about this? Are there some uh, websites and some links that people could go to read more about this that you could tell us about? Yes. My website is timefordisclosure.com. And my Facebook group is Time for Disclosure slash We Have Never Been Alone slash We Are the Disclosure. And that's because I believe all of us chose to be here. And I believe this is a disclosure. It doesn't matter what the government has to say about anything. When we get to that higher level of consciousness, we will know ourselves and we'll learn to look within and follow our heart and make the right decisions. And it won't matter what any government says. We will know these things on our own. Well, I really love your, your mission and the, or the mission you've been given. Because, yeah. I mean, it would be nice if we lived in a utopia and it was love and we didn't have war. Uh, I'm one well, of those people that, huh? We're at the pivotal point where uh, I think if we don't be great, go in the know, right direction, we're going to wipe ourselves out. And I think people don't realize a lot of times I hear people say how, you know, certain people are mad at religions and they're mad at this. And I, I try to tell them it isn't really about that. It's about man's greed and stuff and the people that control and that people are controlling other people and, and it becomes corrupt. And uh, I think what you're trying to say is we're trying to uh, elevate us above that. Yes. So that human society and yes. our beings would, our life would be elevated and life would be better. And I think that's the paradise that I think somewhere in us, we all like and would like to have. But I do think there are people that want to keep other people repressed and they want to have yes. the, the life. That's but, why, you because know, that's, they're in control. <laughs> so I'm just going to say, people that have, have listened to this, uh, I'm going to put it up, it'll probably be up tomorrow, but if they want to pursue more and look more into it, uh, to go to your websites and uh, check it out, learn more about it, and it would be nice for us all to uh, live in a utopia and to progress, that would be beautiful. Uh, I think that's what enjoying, we all really want. We should be enjoy our families more and not be worried about paying bills or working two or three jobs because by the time we retire, we're unhealthy. We don't even get to enjoy the human experience and we should enjoy being a human being. 
I agree with that. Or maybe being something more than a human being. Maybe that's the issue that would be good, you know? Well, thank you, Nancy, though, for uh, being with us today and telling us about your life and, and the mission you have. And like I said, I hope people are interested. They go out and uh, read more about you and maybe even contact you. And more people, if they want to interview you and learn more, I, I would hope that that would happen and hope it, that this is part of your next step in uh, getting your message out and helping. Yes. So, so thank so you. Thank you, Nancy. And we, we will post some uh, links for your stuff and uh, get people contacting you. I know I always you have fingers going here. Yeah. 